All right, guys, welcome back to another Tuesday, Thursday Animal Adventures with Jordan. And today we are featuring our East African crowned crane. Now, this guy here, we've had at the facility for a few years. And the crowned crane is a bird native to Africa. Now, in Africa, these guys are uh, one of the more beautiful crane species and one of the more beautiful crane species in the world. So before we go into conservation and, and some really neat dancing rituals, we'll talk about anatomy real quick here. So our African crowned cranes grow about three and a half to about four feet tall. They average about seven to eight pounds in body weight. And then they also have a wingspan of about six to six and a half feet wide. So it's pretty significant. And with those wings, these guys are actually capable of flying. Of course, not like a migratory bird, but they will fly from, uh, I guess, their drier areas to the more wet areas when it's time for their breeding season. Now looking at the animal, you can see up on his head there, obviously they're boasting those golden thin feathers at the top, which give him that crown crane name. Down that face a little bit, you actually have a bare skin area, that's that white. And sometimes when engaging in breeding, dancing and behavior, that will turn a little uh, uh, flush or red. And below that chin there, you see a little red dewlap, flap of skin there. Now that is actually an inflatable pouch and when these guys are calling to one another or courting one another, that actually inflates and they produce a very uh, very loud vocalization. I'm not going to mimic it here for you so I don't embarrass myself, but very unique, very cool and I encourage you to Google that or YouTube it uh, after you're watching this video today. Now moving down the body a little bit, of course we can talk about those feathers. The majority of the feathers on that body is of that gray plumage. And of course if we're lucky enough our crane will open up, show off that wingspan and you'll see the white and black uh, um, flight feathers down below. Getting down to our legs, you'll notice the legs are very slender, all right, and that allows them to help wade through the tall grasses in that wet environment when they're uh, starting to build their nest and engage in that uh, laying and rearing of the chicks. Now at the bottom, their feet, which you're not going to get a good shot of today, however, their toes are very long and slender, which kind of makes them a little more unique than some of the other crane species. In fact, the crown crane is the only true crane that actually goes up into the trees to roost. They'll engage in that behavior in the evenings, much like the Native American, uh, excuse, uh, Native to America uh, wild turkey, where they roost to stay away from their predators. But of course, they spend the majority of their day in grasses and in the wet areas searching for their food. Now, another neat thing about those feet is as they're walking, they actually will stomp their feet. And as they're stomping their feet, they're uh, disturbing possible prey items. And that's when they get their visual and peck down and consume them. So now what are they eating? Well, they're an omnivorous bird. So these guys will engage in eating, of course, plant matter, but also insects like our super worms we have here today for our friend. Also smaller invertebrates like reptiles. And then the eggs of aquatic species in the wet environments that they inhabit during the breeding season. Now, when not in breeding season, because I keep saying, mentioning this wet environment, these guys generally inhabit the drier savannas of eastern and southern Africa. And quite often, we'll find them among the populations of uh, hoofstock. And as that hoofstock is grazing and mowing down the grass, what are they disturbing? Of course, more prey items. And that's when our cranes follow amongst them or behind them and consume what they can because they are obviously, uh, uh, a, I guess, an impulsive and uh, uh, eating on demand. They stock up when, when they can. Now, some other neat things about these guys is that they engage in this really neat dancing behavior. Now, uh, many cultures, many tribes actually mimic the crown crane dance in their tribal dancing because it plays such a significant role in their culture. One of those dances uh, is to uh, more or less announce the uh, onset of the rainy season. Of course, as the rains are moving in, the crowns are dancing. So then those tribes also perform those dances and of course bring in the rain gods. Now that dancing our cranes actually perform is not obviously to call on the rain, it's to court one another. Now dancing will occur throughout uh, the year, but uh, the dancing for mating or courtship is very different. They'll swoop down and around with their wings. That red pouch or dewlap will inflate and they'll start calling. And what happens is when this behavior begins, our flock, which can consist of 50 to 100 to 200 cranes, they start to isolate themselves into their breeding pairs. Now these guys are monogamous breeders. Generally they do mate for life. Now these two cranes, this pair, will move from those drier savannas to that wet area that I discussed, those wetland type environments. And in that tall grass is where they start to make their nest. And those nest materials are of course of the long uh, uh, grasses and different matter that they can find. And the nests are actually raised up off the ground, almost like a pedestal, which again raises them up above possible flooding levels that could occur during that wet time. Now when mom produces her eggs, they actually produce some of the largest clutches of the crane family. They can have as small as two, but anywhere up to like five or six little eggs. Now those eggs 
are sat and then they hatch after about a month, about a 30 day uh, sitting period. Those crane babies, when they come out, they're cute and small, about probably about that size there. And their plumage is just like you would think of a uh, baby chicken, very fluffy. And it does not look anything like the adults. And over time, as they begin to fledge, they lose that soft uh, chick down and bring on those natural and mature uh, older bird feathers. Now, when the babies hatch, they do stay with their parents for anywhere from 100 days to up to like 16 months. And that's when mom and dad teach them how to forage for food. And also they learn to leave that wetland environment and go back to those dry savannas. Now, neat thing also about them is their conservation need, okay? We've been featuring a lot of other animals lately that really didn't have significant conservation need, but these guys are actually on the endangered species list. They were moved there in 2012 from vulnerable to endangered. They believe that there's somewhere between anywhere 30,000 to even 70,000 of them left. So a neat thing here at Animal Adventure and something we're happy to announce is that we have finally been accepted into our first species survival program, the SSP, and that is for the East African Crown Crane. Pretty shortly here we'll have a breeding pair of adults joining us from the Cape May Zoo and what will happen is that they'll stay with us, we'll produce those chicks and then they will be redistributed into the other facilities of the species survival program and continue to preserve the species and pass on that genetic strain. So we're very excited to have our male here, bring on a few more in the future and see where exactly we can go with it. So on that note, we're going to wrap up today's animal adventure. Join us again, I believe it's on Tuesday and I think I might be off site. We'll let you know on our Facebook page. Get on that page, like us. We'll let you know we may be up at the New York State Fair. All right, take care. Tune in next week. We'll see you again soon.